Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here with an all science fiction wrap up. I've been reading the genre so much lately, I am just obsessed with it and I have a really good group of books to recommend. I think that there are books here for people that are hardcore science fiction readers as well as those that are maybe looking to get into the genre, don't know where to start, are intimidated by adult science fiction. And so I'm really excited to tell you about them all and let's get started. First, I read Spin by Robert Charles Wilson and this is set in a near future when one day the stars disappear from the sky and the story is told over a period of time. Primarily we are following this group of young people who were children when this event first happened and then we watched them grow. I would describe this book as a piece of science fiction but also a coming of age story. We get to follow particularly one young man as he grows up and you find out he has a love interest in this other young woman and also a friendship with her brother. And and you get to see how their lives change, how they move from innocent children into adults. And of course, it's also a science fiction book, so we get to find out what is happening in the stars surrounding the Earth, what is actually going on. I do not want to give it away, but the actual science and ideas behind the story are really compelling, and I really like those aspects to it. It is a piece of harder science fiction, so it definitely does have some more technical speak in here, but I also think that it's still very accessible and at the heart of a story again it's really about these characters and so you follow them and I think that they're very relatable you get to again see the interplay of their relationships and if I had a complaint with the story it's the fact that I love the science of the book so much but so much of the story was about the characters and I just did not care about the romance at all and this is just a very personal thing for me. So that was what really held this book back from being a favorite but again I like the ideas, I like the premise. I know there is a sequel to this book but I've heard that it's not as good so I've decided to just leave Spin as a standalone for myself. But overall if you're intrigued by the premise, if you want to know why the stars disappeared, I would recommend checking it out for yourself. It's beloved and it's for a good reason. I heard about this book from Jason Weird Reads channel. It's one of his all-time favorites. Definitely recommend checking him out for science fiction, fantasy, and horror. And yeah, I just thought that this book was really well done and I can see why it's, you know, again, so beloved. After that, I read Supernova Era by Sisson Liu, and this is a translated science fiction story that is set in a future where there is this cataclysmic event that is going to cause this radiation that will kill off the entire adult population, and only children approximately around the age of 12 or younger are going to survive. They realize this ahead of time, and so the adults begin preparing the children to take over the various functions of running the planet and political systems. Now, let me say from the start that this book requires a huge amount of suspension of disbelief. That premise is ridiculous. The science behind a certain age cutoff particularly allowing everyone to survive or not survive is pretty implausible to begin with. And then the idea that the world possibly could survive and could be run by little children is in a way quite far-fetched. So you have to go into this book knowing that that's the premise and just accepting it. But if you can get past this, I thought this book was a lot of fun. It's really interesting and it kind of reads like a social experiment, like what would happen if this situation did occur. Now, I really enjoyed the stage involving the preparations for the children eventually taking over. I thought it was really interesting to see how that knowledge was passed over to them. And then in the second part of the book, we actually get to see what happens when the children are in charge. And for a lot of readers, this is when they get lost in this book or stop liking it. And that's the fact that when you put children in charge of a world, terrible things are going to happen and in my opinion children can be little sociopaths and so you have to keep that in mind that this is not a utopian future by any means and it really plays with the idea of what would truly happen and I think the author is honestly pretty honest about how terrible children are and the terrible things they would do. So think of like Lord of the Flies but in a sci-fi setting. That is what you're gonna get. So I'll be honest, this book has pretty mediocre reviews online. It's not gonna be for everyone but I personally enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was a lot of fun. I love 
watching kids do terrible things to each other and you're gonna get a lot of that in this book and again it just felt like a really fun thought experiment and I personally really enjoyed it. After that, I went on to read the author's more popular book, and that is The Three-Body Problem, also by Sistan Liu. And this is the first book in a trilogy. This is a piece of hard science fiction. And I don't want to give away too much of the plot, because if you read the back of this book, it actually gives away more than I would personally like to say. And so this book involves the Chinese Cultural Revolution, and it also involves a VR game that one of the characters gets involved in. And you start to realize that there is more to this game that it actually has meaning behind it and the story goes from there and again the actual book will tell you way more than I think you should know going into this book so if you haven't been spoiled leave it there but this is a book that I was very intrigued to try admittedly again I read his other book first and this one is definitely a lot heavier so I would only recommend this one to people who read science fiction on a regular basis I liked the concept explored in this book. There's some really interesting science, although because I am a layperson, I do not have a major or post-secondary education in the science area. Some of this book honestly did go over my head. I have read some really technical books before, but I felt like those other authors did a better job of bridging the gap for readers like myself, and this book kind of left me in the dark. There were certain parts where I just felt like I did not understand what was happening and the author was not making any attempt to help me with that. And so just keep that in mind. Again, I very much recognize that that is my own personal experience. That being said, the story was intriguing. And probably what I think this book did best is create a really compelling mystery because you have this virtual reality game. It's very unique and you realize that there are stakes involved, that there is more going on and that mystery really really was what kept me turning the pages. I overall like this book and I like the concepts that I explored, but for whatever reason, it just didn't quite hit home the way I wanted it to be. I thought it would be a five-star favorite and it wasn't. Still a really good book. At this point, I do intend to continue on with the trilogy and I will let you know how that goes. But as a first book, it was definitely compelling and yeah, held my attention for the most part. Next I read Freeze Frame Revolution by Peter Watts. It's the same author who wrote Blindsight, another one of my favorite sci-fi books. But this one is very short, more like novella length, and it follows a crew of a ship going on a long mission. So they are put into cryosleep for the most part and their ship is controlled by an artificial intelligence. However, at various times throughout their mission, the AI needs to wake up the humans in order to assist them with things, often making decisions that they feel are over over their own personal abilities. And so you basically have people that are put to sleep and then they wake up and have a few moments in time, hence the freeze frame, and then they go back to sleep. However, the humans begin to question if they are actually in a good situation, if there are some terrible things happening or if they need to take control of the ship. And so they begin to make plans in order to get more control, but they have to do so in the setup where they are constantly put back Back to sleep and so again it's a really interesting experiment on how this would be done some really creative ideas played out throughout this book and it's Peter Watts so the science in this book is fantastic the ideas I loved it all and it was very good not as good in my mind to blind sight but definitely worth reading and I thought it was just yeah an interesting a fun exploration of a possible future and finally, I read Invasion of the Body Snatchers by Jack Finney. This is a classic science fiction story with slight elements of horror that is set in the 1950s and follows a doctor who gets approached by someone who says that their uncle is possibly not their uncle. Even though he acts like her uncle, he remembers everything, he looks just like him, but for whatever reason, she feels like it is not actually him. And soon enough, he starts to have more people giving the same experience, saying that their loved ones just aren't quite right. There's something wrong with them and they have possibly been replaced. And I think most people know the premise of this one. I have not seen the movie, but I feel like it's just such a part of pop culture that I kind of knew what I was getting myself into. And oh my goodness, this book was a lot of fun. It is an older science fiction book and I will say that it felt dated, but in a really 
good way. It felt very much of its time. And especially the female representation was, again, dated, but it did not turn me off. I thought it was a lot of fun to read. It just really took me back to this time period. And it just was just fun. So if you're looking for a science fiction book that is just entertaining, doesn't have a lot of science in it, this is a good one to pick up. I would recommend it to those of you that perhaps read a little bit more horror. This one definitely is not scary, but it really plays out kind of like a sci-fi horror movie. It really does kind of dance between the two genres and is very accessible, very approachable. And yeah, overall it was a lot of fun and definitely one that I think more people should read because I feel like it's kind of an underappreciated class classic book even though so many people love the movie so I'm definitely glad I checked this one out. This is a book that was recommended to me or was recommended at least online by Mariana of Impression Blends and I love her channel so I'm glad I finally checked this one out. So and that's it. We've made it to the end of the video. I would love to hear of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out? And like I said, I cannot get enough of sci-fi these days, especially hard science fiction, sci-fi horror, all of that. So if you have recommendations for books that you think would be right up my alley, science fiction books that you don't think I've read yet, I would love to hear them down below. If you're new to my channel, I do read a lot of adult science fiction as well as fantasy, thrillers, and horror. You can help me out by sharing this video around online. Give me a thumbs up, hitting that notification bell. Otherwise, I will talk to you again soon. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye.